Well, you clap at your start. No, no. <laughs> you're a father, you're a husband, uh, a professional footballer with a full time job as well. Many of us know that. Um, you started out from a casual futsal goalkeeper, no? Mm. Um, and now you're in the European group stages and you've even represented the nation most recently against the likes of Norway. Yeah. Um, it's safe to say, I think, that you've been there, you've done that, you've seen it all. Yeah, no, it's by, by far been way more, I've achieved way more than what I set myself out to do at the beginning. I remember, and I've, I've probably said this story before, I was in the first European campaign when the GFA played Ireland, I was in the stand. Yeah. And after a few pints of guineas, <laughs> I actually made a promise to my dad and said, I'm going to try my best to at least be in the frame of being selected for the GFA, whether yeah. I play or not. And that's not, that wasn't in my head at, the, at that time. But after that trip, I put my head down and kept start working really hard. And four years later, I played in the same stadium. So yeah. it's been one hell of a journey, to be fair. And I think I've, I've exceeded way more than what I ever expected. So, but yeah, just point that goes to show that no matter if you work hard, anything's possible. Yeah. Did you ever expect it to be possible from, from the very beginning? To be fair, no. To be fair, I just, my aim was just to be able to play alongside the likes of Roy Lee. And for me, that was, I've always looked, really looked up to him, especially Roy, the way he looks after himself and the kind of person he is. Lucky enough to call him not only a teammate, captain, but a friend as well. And I've learned a lot from him. For me, it was just, I wanted to play with him. You know yeah. what I mean? And I've, and I ended up sharing the pitch with him for me has been, for me, it's been one of my highlights. I know a lot of people think, oh, but for me, that's yeah. a lot of people look up to professional players. I like to be a bit more humble and look at people around my, you know yeah. what I mean? My standard, yeah. my, my, you know, my, my, my surroundings. So, yeah. So you joined Lincoln in 2019. Mm. Um, and in such a short time, you've achieved so much with the club already. See, yeah, well, uh, to be fair, that's probably one of my, I wouldn't say regrets, but I wish I would have joined Lincoln a bit before. Because although I did my whole youth with Lincoln, I spent a couple of couple of years where I didn't play football. This was pre UEFA, I just stopped playing and lost a bit of interest in the game. And uh, then pre UEFA, I started playing with a few friends and this and that. and then. UEFA, when the UEFA came, I played futsal for a long time. Then the, the Gibraltar United project came up, came up on me, and I, I thought it was an interesting project. We started in the second division, one straight away, and when we moved up to Premier, and then, like you say, in two thousand and nineteen, the old manager came knocking on my door, and I said, I, I didn't even think about it twice. Yeah. I said, this is my chance. You know what I mean? I, I played with some good players, but I wanted to play with the best of the best. Mm. And we felt the best of the best was at Lincoln at the time. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to see if I had the level and the commitment to to play with them. And I, I, proved, I, proved, I proved I did. I mean, last year for me, second half of the season was probably the best I've played. And I played a major part in winning the league and the cup. And for me, it was my first league, my first league and my first cup. I really enjoyed that. Yeah, good most, and most recently, of course, we're here. See, so, yeah, and then from there, the, the, from the ball started rolling. Yeah. And, I mean, I don't think people realise what we've achieved yet. And they won't realise until in a couple of years' time when I, I hope I'm wrong, but I don't think this will be achieved in a long time. Being able to qualify for a group stage has been yeah. a big wow talk, factor. Talk here. to us about that day, about about that playoff against Grigat. Like your emotions that day, what you were feeling, your family was feeling. Listen, we took it as, a, as another game because we, we wanted to play the game, not the occasion. But we knew what was at stake. But that was all. This has been a bonus, you know what I mean? We set out to reach Champions League, win the league, Champions League, and then everything's been a bonus from then. Yeah. But to be fair, even though results haven't gone our way, I think we've, we've played our part. We haven't sort of shied away, we've played good football. And I mean, it's been a, a, a blessing. This has been a blessing. That's why I believe that I mean, that's been part of the reason why the decision for me to call it a day, because mm -hmm. I, what we've achieved is 
the next thing is winning the Champions League. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. way, way, we're miles away. One can dream, but, but we, we can't. Can, right, exactly. This before. Exactly. Here we are. But uh, I don't think I'm going to achieve much more in football, so I'd rather leave on a high yeah. than on the way down where you start getting injuries or nobody wants you. Mm-hmm. Or, so that's been part of the reason. I mean, I've witnessed this, I've experienced this. I've played a big part in it. And yeah. for me, that's. I'm, I'm really happy with what I've achieved. So that's part of the reason why I'm. Yeah. And at this stage, I think you consider yourself obviously one of the veterans of Gibraltar yeah. football yeah. in general. Yeah. Who would you say um, your biggest, what would you say your biggest motivation has been to continue even in my these kids. late age? Late my years? kids. Yeah. My son. I've always wanted, <laughs> don't even want to be emotional here. Yeah. No, 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 I've no, always wanted that. It's I've good. always wanted to make him proud. That's been my, your biggest my support, push. Right? Yeah. Seeing, seeing my son battle with um, type 1, I would just see him inject himself every day. He's my hero. He might call me. Oh. I might be his hero, but he's mine. Um, talk to us through some of the difficulties as a parent for people to understand what it means to I mean, I, I was I was very naive about di- diabetes. I thought we'd just take a pill and that's it. Yeah. You know what I mean? But when we found out with Callum, we knew something was wrong. It was after summer and we went to a school open day and um, the teacher said, you know, we're not going to talk about anything academically. He's doing really well. So, but I'm, I'm worried because he, he's asking to drink a lot of water and as a consequence, he's asking to go to the toilet a lot. And he had already weed in his bed couple of nights before and that was really strange of him because he's he, you know what I mean he matured really quick so we took him we took him into the doctors and obviously they took a urine sample and it came back straight away that his sugars were sky high and it's not normal in a kid so automatically he was t- he was diagnosed as type 1 diabetic being so young I mean we're blessed that it's been him because since day one he, he's injected himself he's tested himself and he's been really mature about how he goes yeah. about things. You can ask him, Callum, how many carbs does this packet of crisps have? I mean, right off my heart. So in that sense, we're really blessed. Kind of like an elite athlete yeah, mentality yeah, as well. No, I, mean, into that. I mean, with obviously he does go, th- go through phases where he'll explode and say, why me, why? But uh, we have, in considering the, the situation, we have been blessed that it's been him. Um, obviously being a young kid, you know, the summer period, the festive periods like Christmas and that, it's harder to control because, you know, the ice cream. He's a, he's a kid. He goes out, out to the park, sure. goes to the pitch and his friends are having a, a, a crisp or chocolate or anything and he wants to be part. He doesn't want to be... But, uh, I mean, it's extremely hard, especially for us parents at night because we need to wake up quite often to test him at night just to make sure that he's not dropping too low. We've had a few really bad episodes where he... he Come so low, he will hallucinate. Uh-huh. You know, he'd be running around the house not knowing where he is or what he's doing and shouting yeah. silly things. And it's just never nice seeing your son like that. Never no, nice. Of course not. But uh, we've also, my wife just now, she is, I mean, bless her, she's, she's done a big charity uh, movement. You know, yeah, yeah. Instead yeah. of taking pictures. That was part of that. Yeah, and I can't thank them enough because I th- don't think there's enough awareness in Jib. And for how small Jib is, the amount of Kids that are diabetic is way out of the norm mm. compared to other countries. So we've tried, we've tried to build a bit more of awareness. And what, what can the public do to you to help help the cause? Obviously, knowing who's diabetic and who's not, because if my son is down the street and you see him, you know he he will recognize his lows, but he won't recognize his highs. Right. The difference is when he's low, he become really weak, really shaky, really pale. But when he's high, he's very aggressive. He'll tell you himself. He feels right. like hurting someone. Because he's got that that rage in him, so it's it's knowing it's knowing that the person who's diabetic and knowing whether he's acting like this because of this. Mm. You know, I mean, we've been very grateful. I mean, the way the school has treated, we have a WhatsApp group with the teachers, constantly communicating. Yeah. But people need to understand as well that it's 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 a it's a disease it's a disease in some way, and it's not fixed just by taking one pill. Sounds going to inject himself a minimum of four times a day. So it's knowing a bit more about the disease than anything else. And moving on from that now, 
Um, over your career, you've collected an impressive portfolio of achievements, you can say, um, even though it might have been a short one uh, on your terms. Um, it's been one full of experiences and stories to tell in the future for your grandchildren mm -hmm. and so on. Um, but is there, that, is there one thing left in your checklist that you haven't done? I can't really say because, like I said before, I've achieved way more than what I ever expected. And I mean, I'm retiring now knowing that, for example, I've been the most capped goalkeeper, senior squad, even though obviously Dale and the younger kids, we haven't got that time, that time on their hands, that, that definitely will be broken. And most wins and most clean sheets, that, 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 that will definitely be broken. Yeah. But like I said before, I've, I've achieved way more than what I expected, so I'm, I'm really, really happy with what I've achieved. Now, hopefully I can pass on that, that experience, like you say, to my son. I'm helping like Ryan yeah. run my son's team with the, with the keepers and that. Just passing on that little bit of experience, nice, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's... Keeping it going. Yeah, and it will keep me, keep me ticking over, you know what I mean? Yeah. Taking that edge off the football. And speaking of experiences, what would you say is your most cherished memory of football? <laughs> If you had to pick one, yeah. <laughs> that's that's a tough one. Uh, obviously, from a club perspective, is qualifying for the group stage. There's no doubt, no doubt. And from the national team, that night in Armenia and um, the Liechtenstein and winning the group. Yeah. Yeah. To be fair, I feel like I've had a more my more successful international career when you, when you look at the it's nights and on, yeah. than than club career. That's why I, I feel like, that's why I feel like. Have that little bit of S of that I didn't join Lincoln before because I know I could have had way more success with Lincoln. I've had great times. Eh? Some of my best times was with Jib United, yeah. battling at the bottom, you know, almost qualifying for mm -hmm. for the Europa League. But with Lincoln, there's been way more success. So, and of course, there's no success without any difficulties. No, so, no like, definitely, definitely. Um, no doubt there have been lows in your football mm -hmm. career. Well, talk to us through some of them lows and. And if you have any words of encouragement for those coming up behind you who might want to follow your footsteps. No, it's like you mentioned, there's no there's no success without failure. And you're gonna fail more when you're gonna then you're gonna succeed. And if you take those failures as a lesson rather than a defeat, then that's when you're gonna that's when you're gonna see an improvement. Yeah. That's the way I always saw it. As much as it hurt, it was a driving force to go back into a training session and try even harder. And now looking forward to retirement, um, a life without football, mm. uh, a very, a very busy one. No, with football, a lot of commitments. Now that you have some time off, what are some of those things you'd like to catch up on doing that you might not have been able to do before? Quality family time. Yeah. I've really missed a lot out on with my kids. A lot. I mean, I mean, we, for example, my son's birthday is on the 15th of November and I've missed every single birthday because we've been on uh, international duty, we've been away. Those are tough because even though we celebrate his birthday before we go, it's not on his actual day. Uh, the same, the same I can say with my daughter. Just being able to take her to dance lessons and my son taking him to training, be be able to sit down and watch him play and enjoy him play. Mm -hmm. That's for me, it, it's a blessing. I mean, I've missed a lot I'm spending some quality time with my wife going out to dinner and kilo. Yeah, of course. You know, because even though we, we would do kind of those kind of things, there was always that thing on the back of my mind where I've got to go home, I've got to go rest, I've got to go training. Yeah. Now, just to be able to do those things at peace is completely at peace. Yeah. Yeah. And aside from obviously being uh, Kyle Goldwyn, um, it's who you are, your character, part of the reason why you're so popular with the fans. Um, you're known to be the loudest and most yeah. outspoken on the pitch <laughs> anywhere you go. Um, has there only been one point where you thought, oh, I shouldn't have said that? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, loads of times. Listen, listen. Every time uh, something's happened, either I've, I've got a red card, a yellow card, <laughs> probably being the keeper with the most cards. <laughs> I always regret it, and, and and I want this to be known. It's it's never, and I never say things with bad intentions. I, I I play at hundred miles an hour. Yeah. I can't do things in yeah. another way. Yeah. Uh, it's all or nothing, and it, that's how I transfer it yeah. onto the pitch. It's who I am. I cannot. I, I, I go into a game saying, you know, no. Right. <laughs> stay calm, stay tranquilo, but I can't, it just takes over, you know yeah. what I mean? The day you see me, or when well, you won't see me, <laughs> the day you, if I ever go to a game and I'm quiet, guarantee I'm going to have a bad game. 
I've got to be on top of everything. And strikers, mm. everything. You know, it's how I play my game. And I've had a, I've, I've had more success than, you know what I mean, playing that way. Yeah. So I can't, I can't change. It's yeah. who I am. I, I've tried, true. but at the end of the day, this is me. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, I have out my sleeve, I play at hand. I give everything 100 miles yeah. an hour. I've had good games, I've had bad games. But my effort's always been 100%. And what's the story behind Sheena, apart from the obvious? Wow. Uh, apart from uh, the obvious. Well, yeah, we're going to say because Elton's, I think it's his brother, Sean. Because I come from there's Gatillo, which yeah, is up there. Yeah. And I, I used to hate it. I used to get in a fight every day. Because it's the call you Sheena. Yeah. Right. And I turned 16 and uh, I, had, I had some money saved up. And I said, you know what? They're not going to win. I went down and I got it to food right on my back. Oh. Next time I went to the pitch, I go, yeah, and they said, she knows him, trying to wind me up. And I said, yep, don't mind, there you go. And I had it to do them on that. And since then, it stuck. Even my kids call her she knows. You know? embraced it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's good. And your kids call you she Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, yeah, and can we expect to see more of Kai Goldman in football? Is this, is this the end of no, football? No, I'll, I'll, I'll be here. Uh, one way or another, I'll be a part either helping Lincoln out or whether it's with a GFA or yeah. so as well. No, and See, no, that won't yeah. stop. That won't stop. I, I'll always want to be a part of the journey of my son. I, I try not to get too involved. I like I leave, I leave the coach, you know what I mean? Because then, you know, we end up clashing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but uh, I'll be, I, I like helping Ryan with the keepers and I like seeing, I like seeing people, uh, keep young kids develop and whether that would be with Lincoln or the GFA or yeah. whatever. We, Still remains to be seen, but um, no, nah, this won't be the last. I need a good break, obviously. I'm obviously really looking for, for looking forward to a summer holiday with my family, but uh, this won't be the last. Lastly, looking back in your career, people you've met, the matches you've played, you know, and the things you've experienced, how does it feel ultimately if you could round it up that it's coming to an end in a way? It's been a roller coaster, all right, man. And it's the only way I can put it. From like you mentioned before, if you look at my career in inverted commas it's been a short career because what 2013 i was involved with the futsal two years two or three years i was lucky enough to represent futsal i mean with the gfa and then it all snowballed from there and it's been really quick and that's one advice i want to give people i mean don't burn yourself out make sure you have a distraction away from football i have gone 100 miles an hour with football and that's probably been why it's probably burnt me out a bit quicker than others because i've just gone straight yeah. flat out yeah so have a bit of a distraction the only thing is me personally i can't do it any other way and uh, it's all or nothing mm -hmm. you know, everything or so don't burn yourself out just have a have an outlet but yeah it's been one hell of a ride man one hell of a ride mm -hmm. so let's just make sure tomorrow night but hopefully i think i think football owes us owes us one yeah to be fair for sure. Um, and that's it, that's the last question. Yeah. Thank you for what you've done for the club. Yeah. Up until now, on behalf of the club as well, yeah, we wish you a happy retirement. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.